A group of 50 former Bush administration officials recently endorsed Donald Trump. One of them, former Attorney General John Ashcroft, who joins us now. Mr. Attorney General, welcome back to the program. It's good to see you, sir. <laughs> well, Mr. Varney, it's, it's nice to be with you. I enjoy the program. So, I can't call you John right out of the bat. Yeah, you can. No, I can't. <laughs> okay. No. Why now? Why, it's kind of late for you guys to be endorsing Donald Trump. Why now? Well, that's the formal endorsement. I've been public about my support for <clears throat> Donald Trump for a long time. And it's because I believe that the rule of law is the best friend that liberty ever had. And unfortunately, the Obama administration, with Hillary Rodham Clinton being complicit in it, has literally devalued the rule of law. You have presidential edicts that amend statutes willy-nilly, like the Obamacare, amending his own program without the Congress, uh, suspending the enforcement of the laws that the people have enacted through the Congress on immigration, doing the same in relating to drug enforcement and the like. And I believe that uh, we need a president who is committed to the rule of law, and I believe that Donald Trump is more likely to restore the rule of law. The rule of law restoration, I think, should be one of the front burner issues of our country, where people are never too high to be reached by the arm of the law and never too low to be protected by the protection of the law. And people shouldn't have to move to live in a safer neighborhood. And we need the law and the rule of law, again, to characterize this nation as its prime protector of liberty. On this issue of the rule of law, what do you make of this? Loretta Lynch, current attorney general, is on an unofficial short list of Hillary Clinton's possible Supreme Court nominees. What do you make of that, sir? Well, it appears to me that the, we need an, an attorney general that is committed to the oath to defend the Constitution more than to advance the agenda of the president. And unfortunately, all of the devaluation of the rule of law that we've seen, whether it's not enforcing the will of the people as expressed in statutes regarding immigration, or whether it's adjusting to suit their own tastes, the Obamacare, or whether it's not enforcing the drug laws that the Congress has passed, all of those things reflect a disrespect for at least a subordination of the rule of law to the agenda of the president. We need an attorney general and we need Supreme Court justices who honor their pledge to the Constitution, their oath to the Constitution, more than their personal commitment to a political agenda. I'm going to raise another totally separate issue here, but I'm sure, as, as you know, tomorrow, as of tomorrow morning, uh, midnight, one minute past midnight, America gives up full control of Internet oversight. It turns it over to a kind of a global effort. We've got four Republican attorneys general suing the administration to try to stop it. They're on our screens now. I want your thoughts on this. I mean, can they stop it? And why is President Obama giving up control of something that's so wonderful and that we created? Why? Well, I, I can't answer the question. I don't think there's a good reason why. I do know that America has a devotion and a commitment to an even-handed operation of what is a universal asset and to make this, which has been our business, to conduct very successfully. And incidentally, it has been conducted very successfully with great integrity to hand it over to make it somebody else's business or everybody's business. We've all We've all heard the phrase that everybody's business is nobody's business, and when you have committees running very important functions, you have the same problem you have in the outfield and on the bloop fly frequently. It's the old, you take it, I got it, and things fall between the cracks. Yeah. Yeah. This is an important resource for the entirety of the world, for the global economy, and I'm not a globalist. I believe that in individual responsibility, our nation has had responsibility for this, and I see no reason to cede it to a some sort of international uh, committee, if you will. Don't be such a stranger to the program, Mr. Ashcroft. We, we don't like that. We want you back on our air, okay? That's what we want you. <laughs> it was a pleasure, well, sir. Well, if you want me, call me. Okay, yeah, you might have a deal, I always, I always tell my friends, call me if you need me, and if you don't need me, call me anyhow. I like being called. <laughs> John Ashcroft, everyone, and thank you very much for joining us, sir. Obliged to you. Thank you. Thank you. My pleasure.